This ends the England team, and it's strange to see it without Kevin Keegan, Trevor Brooking and Ray Wilkins all injured. Phil Thompson, as you can see, is the captain. Brian Robson of West Bromwich Albion getting his third cap in the midfield. But so much, I fancy, is going to depend on Gates and Injured. They're mostly part-timers, electricians, accountants, policemen, but they have some quality players too. Ina Orser, the number four, plays for Bayern Munich in West Germany. Roger Albertson, a tough marker in midfield, is with the Dutch club Den Haag. And at 36, he is one of the youngest men on the FIFA list. So the World Cup is on the road again, and Norway in the red shirts attacking the goal to our left. It's the first time they've ever played at Wembley. Larsen Oakland's right in there, so to is Hareden, and tipped over by Shilton from Hareda. The number seven, a real tall, gangly, almost a Jack Charlton-like figure, the way he walks there. Ricks floating it in left-footed. Watson had gone up there, but he was hustled out of it. Erlinson playing it back. Oh, and Woodcock is almost in there. Erlinson, the number 11, holds his head in his hands because he very nearly gave away the opening goal there and how quick Woodcock was to react to it. Look at this for a really terrible back pass and look how quickly Woodcock reacts to it. Belgian referee now happy that everything is ready to go ahead. Ricks curling it in again. And a goal by Terry McDermott. Well, it was a goal England wanted badly enough. And the two men hugging each other there, Ricks and McDermott, between them got it. I think McDermott must have been surprised at the amount of space that he had there. There's Ricks floating it in. Just look at the space they allowed McDermott there. And he got it on the half volley superbly, right into the corner there, off the stanchion. And, well, it's worth seeing again because it's one that they wanted so badly. Half volley, past Jakobsen in the goal, 1-0 to England. Ricks with a little touch, Woodcock hammering it, good save by the keeper. There by Albertson. Sanson turning into a bit of trouble with a neat back heel, finding Ricks, sliding his way out of that challenge and finding Tony Woodcock. And the keeper did well again, quickly off his line as Woodcock came towards him. Oh, Ricks lost that one out, but Shilton's there for England. Oh, my word, he very nearly made a mess of that one. And Thompson struggled to get that away under pressure from Jakobsen. Oh, a territorial advantage, but... Every time the Norwegians break, you begin to wonder. But here's Mariner now, trying to get up and getting up well there. And put in there by Woodcock for number two. Well, that certainly gives England a breathing space. And a lovely leap by Mariner that really opened up the way for Tony Woodcock. As Thompson plays the ball in here, Mariner really at his best, getting up so well, nodding it down, and good finishing here. Quick thought about having a bang at goal and now suddenly it's probably opened up the other end as the very speedy Jakobsen has got Albertson up with him and Jakobsen's gone past Thompson but not past Shilton and his reflexes seem as sharp as ever but now here's Gates Mariner going all the way brought down and a penalty Mariner brought down a penalty for England Oh, will it be 3-0 for England now? It is! McDermott, second of the night. Well taken penalty. Some encroachment there by the Norwegians. But it doesn't matter because the ball's in the back of the net. And England are leading by three goals to nil. McDermott again. Gates. Woodcock and Mariner, oh, Mariner trying to worm his way through to get a shot in. Oh, a brilliant goal by Paul Mariner. 4 nothing. Well, he winkled that out of a whole host of red shirts there. Here he goes. Past one, past another. Bit of a bit of space there. 
and it beautifully into the corner. 4 0. Paul Mariner gets on the score sheet and he's had a really good game tonight. That's really skilled finishing. <laughs> Pour le compte du groupe 4, les Roumains recevaient les Anglais en blanc. 34e minute de jeu. Vous allez le voir, quelqu'un que vous connaissez bien, une feinte et un tir de Radu Canou. Ballon dévié au passage, il est vrai. 1 à 0 à la mi-temps pour l'équipe de Stefan Kovac. 64e minute de jeu. Enfin, l'égalisation britannique. Les Britanniques privés, il est vrai, de Keegan, de Francis, de Broking. C'est Woodcock qui se charge d'égaliser. Et les Britanniques se disent que, mon Dieu, ils vont sans doute ramener un point de leur périple en Roumanie. Mai 78e minute de jeu, un pénalty tiré par Jordanescu. Clemens, dépité, l'Angleterre battu, deux ans. Groupe, mais restons en Grande-Bretagne avec le match Angleterre-Suisse. Les Anglais sont en blanc. Mariner. Pour son arrière droit, Phil Neal. Coppel, après 22 minutes de jeu, England 1, Switzerland 0. Le réalisateur anglais s'attarde sur Steve Coppel, mais en réalité, ce n'est pas les droits de Manchester United qui a ouvert la marque. Regardez sur ce ralenti. Centre du numéro 7, Coppel. Et oui, c'est Tanner qui prend complètement à contre-pied son gardien de but, Burgen. Les Anglais jouent vite et bien dans cette première mi-temps. Coup franc tiré par Trevor Brooking. Tête de Paul Mariner, 2-0. Un coup de tête made in Great Britain. Un coup de tête qui ressemble à un tir de handball. Le ballon ricoche avant la ligne et termine sa course dans les filets. Burgener n'aurait pas été un bon gardien de handball. Voilà. Bon, ça n'en vaut pas la peine. 2-0 à la mi-temps, mais très bonne réaction de l'équipe suisse en deuxième période. Verlis de Grasshoppers pour Pfister de Grasshoppers également. 2 buts 1. Alors que vous découvrez sur ce plan le numéro 6, Umberto Barberis. Bertine a d'ailleurs été, selon nos confrères anglais, l'un des meilleurs joueurs de la rencontre. Une rencontre qui aurait très bien pu se terminer sur un résultat nul, compte tenu de l'excellente prestation de l'équipe suisse en deuxième période. Un point perdu à Wembley, cela aurait été une catastrophe pour l'équipe d'Angleterre, qui avait été, vous vous en souvenez, récemment battue par la Roumanie à Bucarest de Buzin. Classement du groupe 3, premier Roumanie et Norvège, 3 points. Dans le groupe 4, Angleterre-Roumanie à Wembley, 62 500 spectateurs. Et vous allez le voir à l'image de son gardien international, Shilton. L'Angleterre a trébuché à domicile. Plus de peur que de mal, mais shocking, ont pensé les spectateurs de la tribune placée derrière Shilton. Il a vraiment repoussé les deux justesses. Et il y aura des occasions ratées dans cette partie, des occasions britanniques bien entendu, puisqu'il jouait à domicile, mais toujours repoussé par les hommes de Tonton Stefan Kovac. Ils ont réussi. Regardez, on peut s'appeler Trevor Francis, être un des meilleurs joueurs du monde et rater un but qui paraissait tout fait. Et il y en aura d'autres, des occasions britanniques, mais quand ça ne veut pas sourire, vous connaissez le refrain. Oh, on y a même cru à un moment donné, en deuxième mi-temps. On a cru que c'était fait, que le but qui vaut les deux points dans ces qualifications était obtenu par Haussmann, mais il était hors jeu ce but. Il a fallu déchanter, donc à Wembley, l'Angleterre tenue en échec. Finally, we do get going, and here's Botteron for Switzerland. Marin is in there with the goalkeeper, as it's not quite naked, and Keegan, and a shot, handball, was it? 
They appeal for handball, the England players. A shot by Francis coming off a Swiss body. There's Zappa. Scheibeler. Saucer. Oh, and Scheibeler's continued his run. And Scheibeler scores for Switzerland. He was given so much space and he finished it well. And he started the move too. Kenny Sanson wasn't quick enough. Scheibeler came through two midfield players there. They mistake some responsibility. Kenny Sanson tried to make up the ground, couldn't do it. Scheibeler shot and it went in the near post as Ray Clements dived the other way. So, 28 minutes gone and Freddy Scheibeler the St. Gallen midfield player puts the Swiss into the lead following a move which he began. That was his pass. He continues his run. England is standing watching, really. And Scheibiller, with his right foot, gets it inside the near post. And England are a gold. The Swiss fans delighted with the way their team have taken England on. And here's Saucer. And Saucer's gone past the ball. It's there. England are in disarray. Corner part as Claudio Sulsa gets the second and the Swiss score two in two minutes. And Sulsa took on the defender there, Russell Osman. Kenny Sanson again came across and Sulsa got his left foot shot inside the post. A disastrous two minutes for England. Claudio Sulsa going alone, look how many defenders there were, but nobody could stop him, and Clement, well, it didn't seem too far away from him to me, but he went in the corner, maybe he got a touch, Robson for England though, and here's a chance perhaps for Keegan, as Mariner goes in, and I understand there's a little bit of crowd trouble, and about the uh, attendance, this is Robson, Koppel, and a chance here for Terry McDermott, yes! The substitution pays off, with nine minutes gone in the second half, McDermott is a scorer for England. Good build up here by Steve Koppel, who won the ball, tucked it out right, the Swiss were a man short on that flank, and McDermott drilled his shot, beautifully placed, and into the corner, and England are back in, with a chance at 2-1. Robson on the chest is the referee of Elsinet. And he's found Botteron and this could be dangerous. They've got two people up front. And Botteron slides past Watson as though he wasn't there. And he's got Sulzer on the left. And this is Sulzer. By Weber, but England have pressed forward into the Swiss half. This is Brian Robson with the left foot shot. Oh, good save by Bergener and the Swiss. Are they going to survive? Well, good effort by Robson. England will be in the white shirts, attacking the goal to our left. And he's the man who looks as though he might be lining up to take this free kick now. Kajakash with it, hit it straight at the wall, gets a second go. He was a little lucky and a good save there by Ray Clements. From Neil Yoshi. Up oh, and that's where they're catching us a little bit. But now it's Brian Robson. Koppel. Flick wide for Phil Neal on the far side there. Koppel. In again now for McDermott. Can he cross it in there? Brooking! And he's oh. there! Oh, brilliant. England have scored and Trevor Brooking has done it. Well, that was a marvellous break, and it's incredible the number of times that Brooking gets these important goals in these last two or three years. McDermott was right in there. Brooking only half hit it, but uh, Kadritz did, uh, could do nothing about it. And England, against the odds, have gone into the lead. Muha also, Fazekash with the corner. This is Torokchik over the head, and nodded down there, and pushed away by Clements.
touch there for Keegan. A good save that time by the keeper. And they haven't got it away yet by any means. And England are claiming a handball there. As the ball was uh, thundered into a Hungarian defender by Terry McDermott. And it's Fazekas then with this corner for the Hungarians. A deep one. And against the crossbar from Neil Yoshi. And England were reprieved there because I don't think Clemens would have known a lot about it. And if only he could have found Mariner, and he wasn't far from doing it, Mariner would have been in the clear. As it is, there's trouble. Tarocic. And Clemens is out there. And it's a goal. It's Caraba, the defender, who's done it. And yes, when it looked as though England were breaking away. There was a lovely little chip there by Tarokchik. Clemens came out, could only half save it. And in the end, it makes it 1-1. McDermott, little flick in there, played back by Robson for McDermott. Keegan can't get a hold of it, but here's Brooking with that little cross coming in once more, and it won't reach McDermott. But there's Robson, they allowed him an enormous amount of time there. And now McDermott! And England with a real chance there. So we need to look for midfield men running at defenders. There's Brooking playing a good quick ball for Mariner, who's released down the left, and Keegan's made a break into the middle. Hips over that one. Oh, just past the post there as Robson and McDermott. Here's Mills. Good cross coming in there. Didn't quite reach Dave Watson. Here's McDermott. We've got a lot of whites up at the moment. Koppel. Watson in there trying to lift it forward for Brooking, but I think he may be offside. No, the flag stayed down. Neil with a chance to cross it in there once more, but maybe he'll try and find Koppel down that flank. No, it's in here for Keegan. Played back for Brooking. Terrific goal. A terrific goal by Brooking, and England are back in the lead. Look at the ball caught up in the corner there. A beautiful move and a magnificent finish, and again the Hungarians are stunned. Played in there, back by Keegan. Brooking really whacking it up into the corner there, and England are back in the lead. Tarokchik trying to play it in there once more, and again England standing steady at the back. Keegan back there, finding Koppel, played into space there. Once more for Keegan, and Mariner's onside! He's onside with the keeper to beat. Can this be number three? Can Mariner do it? He can't! Well, there was a golden opportunity of there of... And there was no trouble for the keeper. The throw releasing Kish, and here go the Hungarians again. Really running at people, and Kish going all the way. And he misses. My word, how vulnerable England were in defence there. There, uh... And there's a pass given away to Paul Mariner. Keegan outside him, and Keegan on his own. Onside, can he make it three now, Kevin? Keegan, no he can't, and he's got a penalty, has he? He has indeed into a very positive 3-1 lead. Can Keegan do it? Yes, he can! And England go into a 3-1 lead with 17 minutes to go. Not the most firmly struck penalty. Mills, space there for Mariner, onside. Get that cross in from the byline now, and it's a deep one here towards Terry McDermott, trying to hit it on the volley. Wilkins with the shot, and it's over the top. Phil Thompson's come forward to this one. Keegan glancing it in there. Phil Thompson. And a save on the line. And they hook that away in desperation for another England corner. Now Mariner. Still no goals here. With coming up to a quarter of an hour gone. Keegan, the little backward header. And England coming in here. And Robson. A goal! Yes, it is given! England's breakthrough, Brian Robson the scorer, look at it again, the one they badly wanted, he really forced him way through there, past the keeper, past the defender Grondalen, on the ground, and hooking it in for an important first goal for England, Ron Atkinson. Well that's just the start we wanted isn't it, we've had all these superior play, we've now capitalised on it, this is due to sheer persistence, 
watch him go past here it's nothing more might have been a suggestion of handball there actually goes around the keeper stumbles persistence and uh, I think I'm right in saying that's his first goal for England and he'll never score a more important one Outside, a rider I see has come up Auckland's there Paul Jakobsen's in there Anderson's in there and it might come for Russell Osman and a good save by Ray Clements Blunt with a corner floated in there punched away though knocked out again that time by the skipper Torreson once more to Lund. There's a good cross coming in once more. And it's gone in! It's gone in! And Tommy Lund and Albertson are there. And Norway have equalised. It must have just been a touch by Albertson. Although I think Lund will say, I wouldn't mind claiming that myself. There he is, he's saying it. Yeah. Lund. Well, the space here for Albertson, who's made some very good run forwards from the midfield. Lund now playing it for Auckland on the far side. And McDermott not going, there he is, and a goal! Auckland has put Norway ahead. A terrible mistake there by Terry McDermott. And there's the goal. Torreson. McDermott playing it wide again for Mills. Here's Hoddle turning. Right foot crossing this time towards Mariner once more. Once again, Francis on the far side looking to get to that byline. Succeeds in doing so. Pulls one back for Keegan. Headed off the line. And Keegan, no, the flag was up. And England came close there. Five minutes of the second half gone. And Norway leading by two goals to one. And it's Jakobsen in. And Clements has saved. Well, that was another heart-stopping moment for England. And another goal there. And I think we would have been dead. As England tried to work it forward again. It's Mariner feeding Keegan there. Keegan now trying to repair some damage. And Mariner sweeps it just wide of the far post. Auckland has a nice ball played in there for Tommy Lund. And a good advantage there played for the Norwegians. Into the side netting, though. Neil getting it in again. A ducking little header there. And Keegan almost through, and it'll fall for Peter Barnes again. He could really make a name for himself in the 25 minutes or so that remain. Mick Mills now with a shot. Deflected! Just wide of that post. And again, the Norwegians get it away with Albertson. A long ball forward. Oh, and a slip there by Phil Thompson. And Jakobsen is through. It could be three. And it's saved by Clements. My word, we were nearly out of it then. Gets it remain. Mills running over it. Barnes floating it in there. And a header down and wide there. Score a goal for England, apart from penalties. And that was a year ago tonight against Switzerland. The Hungarian team has an average age of 29. There's only the one change from the accepted first choice lineup, and that's at number eight. Where and Keegan from the pickoff back to Phil Neal. Keegan, he's the number 11, and he brought him down there. McDermott floats one in. Keegan scored again. And he found space there, and little shall I let him go. Good sign for England. Alvin <laughs> Martinet with the goalkeeper. This is Shella Brooking. Oh, is a chance there to go?
Neil in quickly. There's Keegan in there again with uh, Valens. And it's come free, and the drive was by Robson. To stifle the Hungarians in midfield. Kotl. Keegan and McDermott in the middle. Oh, it was taken away from Keegan by Shocking. Robson, oh, that was terrific. Keegan, oh, it's a flick on Van Allen. Can he finish? He overran it. His first touch wasn't good enough. And he knew it. Shit. That was Karakesh to Keish. And it's Keish with the shot, and Shilton in precisely the right place. Martin came in and so did Keegan. Keegan back. Oh, it's just wide by Mariner. Provided we don't concede two goals in the next few minutes. Brooking. Neil. Oh, there's a chance there for McDermott and he throws it right across the goal. Side, Trevor Brooking tries to pick out Keegan. This is Morley on measure rush, and the referee blows his whistle. And England are back in the World Cup finals for the first time since 1970. And Kevin Keegan won't mind the bang in the mouth because he's led England out of the wilderness now, and at last we've got something to bite on. England's World Cup hopes look dead and buried in September. But here we are in November, and we've qualified at last. Indeed, we've actually qualified for the first time since 1962. No wonder the flags are unfurled and Wembley rejoices. I don't think the Hungarians mind too much, to be honest. They're already there, and they're no lovers of Romania anyway. And England have beaten them 1-0. So Hungary and England qualify from Group 4. And the supporters can start to book their flights to Spain and plan their routes and await the World Cup draw on the 16th of January, which will tell us who England will play. Peter Shilton there will be feeling, I think, that the books have been balanced after what happened here against Poland to him and to England in 1973. And Ron Greenwood, who's had to withstand some biting criticism in his spell as the England manager, has done what he promised to do and taken England to the World Cup Finals. years old a week ago Ron Greenwood and as happy a man tonight as his players who now go to thank their supporters led by Keegan who tonight led by example <laughs>